Walter. Hello, how are you doing? We'd like to welcome you to our Tuesday night across the desk with Pastor Clark's Bible study. We're glad you guys can tune in. And those of you who had not subscribed to our YouTube channel, push the like button, the share button, and subscribe to our channel. We can use your subscribers. I'd like to thank everybody that's here on tonight. I prepared a good, informative lesson on tonight. I mean, I've been preaching this lesson to my wife all day. And I think it's going to be real good. They're going to enlighten us on some stuff. And we're going to see why some things really happen in, in the body of Christ. And with people who say they are believers, we'll be able to see in the, with, within the Word of God. Not passing judgment on anybody because we didn't write this. You wrote this up? No, sir. You write this, Walter? No. You write this, Kevin? So we <laughs> no, just read I didn't, it. but people <laughs> argue when you read it. We just read it. So we, we're not taking no credit for what's written. <laughs> but the, we, we, we do believe and we know that the truth is written in this Bible. Brother Tom, you start us off with a word of prayer, please. I will. Father, thank you for the blessings of this day. Thank you for a beautiful day. And uh, your, your watch care in our lives. Thank you for <coughs> taking care of us, Lord. We know there's so many around us that are suffering and going through so much. And we just ask you, Lord, to deal in each situation and, and do what's best and bring honor and glory to your name. Thank you for this time again to be able to come back together and get around the Word of God. And as pastors already said, Lord, we didn't write this. We're just reading it, and it's uh, discernible by the movement of the Spirit of God, and we trust that uh, will take place tonight in all of our hearts and lives, that we'd go away uh, not just challenged by the Word of God, but changed by the Word of God. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lord, you know all the needs on our hearts and in our <coughs> lives tonight. We just thank you in advance for taking care of those and blessing in this service tonight. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, one, 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 thank, thank you, Brother uh, uh, Todd, for that, for that prayer. You know, one, one of my favorite sayings in life is that, because I'm learning this now, you don't get away with anything in life. Mm -hmm. You only get by sometimes. I have to put that sometime on it, because you don't get by all the time, but you don't get away with nothing. No. Have, have, have anybody here when you was young, I say you know, in, your, in your early 20s or, or, or <coughs> late 20s, before 30, did you ever think about reaching 50s or your 60s? Did you ever did you, did you think about, was that even a thought in your mind of getting older or getting older? We thought we was going to be young forever. forever. I know I did. You know. I mean, old old people. We you see, I think we we get in our mindset that they always you know, <coughs> yeah. they never was young. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, my grandmother, I she I didn't see past. Yeah, I know forties used to be old. Yeah, in my twenties, I never looked past thirty. Not that I didn't expect to live past thirty, but I didn't think about those years past thirty. And, 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 and if we had a gave that some thought. We might have made better preparation mm -hmm. for our old years. And it's so important that it's good to make preparation because we see in our society today, the government don't care anything about the seniors. Hmm. No. They do it less as possible. Little as possible. I, 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 the, the, uh, uh, we had trouble with our bank cards, so we had to end up going around and pay our bills instead of paying here to the house. We had to guy go to the light bill place. Well, we had to order a new one, in other yeah, words. And, and thank God it came to them. Anyway, my point is this: so we went to Spectrum. I went in there to. Uh, <coughs> I, went, I went in there to pay 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 the, the internet bill. And uh, so I, I I said, where the line? The man the lady. One lady sitting in the chest says, "No line. You got to sign in over there." So I go over there, and it was a, a guy, an older guy than me. He was trying to sign in, so I helped him. Sign in, and he, he what he came there to do was return some equipment. So and the, the man that came and said you came to turn that we're gonna be a thirty minute wait in order for you to return this equipment because I have no employees, or mm -hmm. you can take it down on the other on the other spectrum on the other side of town. And I said, well, sir, where did you pay your bill with cash? He said, you can go to the chaos kiosk over there and pay your <laughs> bill. Don't take it. So I go over to the kiosk, I put in the information. Which is hard to do. Which is hard to do. And, and, That's I, a hard and, I, and I, so when I get ready to put my cash in, it said we don't give back change. Nope. 
And it was like $68. Yeah, I'm going to put $80 in there. I'm like, no. Not <laughs> they said, well, we'll apply it to your next month. Be a million, y'all might be out of business next month. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I said, I don't have no money to give y'all reach for. I can't even give my money to you like that. And I, I, I said, so I want to ask you a question. I said, but I mean no disrespect. I said, why well, y'all make it so doggone hard for the older people just to pay the bills? You're right. He, he looked at me like as if I said something. Spark, spoke in a foreign language. Uh, another <laughs> language. I said something really crazy. But that's, that's a lot of your question. Yeah. I can't I can't hardly figure that kiosk out. Hey, no, I didn't have no problem figuring on the problem I had when they said we don't need <laughs> no <a> change. I was like, no, not today. You know, and, 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 and you got the saying, and, and I ain't never know in life where well, you got to work so hard. To give me your money mm -hmm. and make you wait in line 30 40 minutes whatever happened to good customer service and then when you come home a lot of places when you try to pay your bills online they want to charge you five dollars for the convenience mm -hmm. but if five dollars short on your bill they cut you off mm -hmm. I, I found i found i found problems with that but that ain't what we're going to talk about tonight. I just, I just want to talk. I want to get that out. There. He want to get that off his chest. Yeah, it bothered me, man. I said, not gosh. He come out of the car. He said, let's go. I said, he told me why that. I said, let's go. I've been there twice in the last several days trying to turn equipment in. And the man told me the other day, he said, you got a 45 minute wait. He said, I've got two employees. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, yeah. well, what about you? <laughs> All he's doing is telling people that. Yeah. If he told you that two days ago, he told me that this yesterday. Well, I, that stopped, is I stopped today, too, and they were lined up for it. I thought, no. And, and then he said, you can take it down to uh, UPS or somewhere and turn it, but they're going to charge it. Yes. Yeah. You're just trying to get the stuff <laughs> back so they won't have you down there stealing the equipment. <laughs> A charge, you know, they, if you don't turn that equipment, they give you a big bill. The next bill, they charge you for the equipment. Well, they all, and I know this isn't on your lesson tonight, but you're talking about older people. The reason why I'm turning the equipment for my mother, her bill for three for three boxes in her house is $198. Woo! And in a year, it's going up another $50. That's it. And the reason why it's this great. kind of been bothering me lately, y'all heard me say it a Came lot on here. here. You know, I, I, I manage a professional boxer. And he always talking about, no, no, I know he going to watch it, but it ain't nothing to get to uh, He always saying, I got to do something for the kids. I am saying, bro, what about the seniors? Mm -hmm. You, I'm getting old, then you're getting old too. What about us? Their seniors, their seniors have to choose between medication and food. That's sad. And yeah, food. That's sad. That's sad. And, and then, <clears throat> and you can't even say too much because they think they're helping you. Mm-hmm. Well, I would like for them people in Washington, and I am saying it right now, to come down and live like regular people have to live and choose mm -hmm. between their medicines and food and see how they like it. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'm glad you said that. Before we go into the lesson, we, 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 no, I'm, I'm going to get on to the lesson, but I, this is coming out tonight. Uh, uh, years ago when I was pastoring in Charlotte, I got invi invited to go to a, 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 a thing that was called Fighting Back taking back our community and, and, and it, it was held in the, in the recreation center in, in, in Charlotte and it was I, I, I went and when I got that note it was three other pastors there it was uh, uh, somebody from Parker Recreation somebody from Habitat for Humanity and they had six students from UNC Charlotte that had been doing a scientific study on people and property. Mm. And it blew my mind because mm. when it got into it, and y'all know anything about me, I'm the, I'm the one man, I'm not gonna bite my tongue because that hurts and I don't like pain. But I'm gonna speak <laughs> what I think I need to speak. I, I, I actually got escorted out of the meeting. Yeah, they, they, they put me out. <laughs> Because of what what happened was they went they went around the uh, the table having everybody to tell who they were and what was their purpose for being at the meeting and I and I was next to last one to, to say something and and I I'm looking at these guys they look the well educated and, 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 and like they really gonna have something good to say and they found sound like fools mm -hmm. stuff that came out of their mouth. 
One said that he remembered as a kid walking 12 miles to school each way. But thank God, he made it. Bro, you ain't made it. You sit right here with me. <laughs> you ain't made it until you rest in Abraham's bosom. Then you can say you made it. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Then I had another guy that said that um, it, it was around, I'll never forget it was around the holiday season, around Thanksgiving and Christmas in between that season. He said, I would like for everybody to go home and look into your closets. First of all, let me back up. When we first got there, they put us on a little bus and they rode us through this neighborhood. It's called Wingate Neighborhood. And people didn't know what I'm talking about. But, but that neighborhood was just like the neighborhood I grew up in. So I. And, 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 and they were looking out the window at the people standing out there doing whatever they do during the day, you know, whatever. So we get back to the reference and now they want to talk about the people. So this one next guy said that uh, when we get home today, is I want everybody to go into your clothes. And get all the stuff out your clothes that you ain't wearing or needing but let's get it together and, and let's give it to the people. Now the first thing came to my mind said the folks got enough old clothes. And the Bible says, want for your brother what you want. Or yourself. In other words, don't give them something you don't, you don't want. You're going to help somebody. Go buy them something. something. You understand what I'm saying? Go do something for them. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I'm saying, boy, I know I'm, I'm, I'm him. So when they got to me, I said, ma'am, I said, yeah, I'm him to false pretenses. I say, I say, I wasn't told this is what it was about. I say, I say, I have a question. I say, would I be able on my spare time to come into the Reformation Center and teach Bible study? To the people, given the word, to give the thing that, that set my life free. You understand what I'm saying? I said, "What I did?" She said, "No, you can't do that." I said, "Well, can I come in here and teach karate?" Yeah. She said, "Yeah." I, 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 I said, said "Y'all brought me here." I said, "I said all the, all it was, but the, all it was, was a cover up." Man, they had got they had got grant money from the city of Charlotte to help I help, help those people. Mm -hmm. What they chose to do with the money. I guess they split it up among each other and just wasted money. Now they call an emergency meeting mm -hmm. and gave us some little Hogan the bologna sandwich and, 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 and the juice. So this is where the money went. Mm. Cover up. Cover up. So, you know, so, so I, you, I, know, I, you, you can't get away with nothing. I, I said, y'all, I said, I don't mean them folk no good. I said, then, then we got the little student from UNC Charlotte. I said, how can you sit up at the university looking at those folk and know what it means to be in profit. I say, give up your scholarship. Come down and stand in the project for 30 days. Live off a welfare check. Then go back to the university. And th then you can say, well, I kind of understand. I say, you can't, you can't, you, you can't, you can't understand a Unless person you walk until you walk in the shoes. You, you don't right. understand If you ain't never been poor, you don't know what it feels like to be poor. If you ain't never been hungry, you don't know what it feels like to be hungry. If you ain't never been on drugs, you don't know what a drug got to go to. You can, you can stand back and say I, 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 what you want to say, but if you, if you had never been there, you don't know what they're dealing with. Correct. If you ain't never lost a parent, you don't know what it means for someone to lose a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand what I'm saying. I, mean, I don't know why I came out of that and I just brought it up. But anyway, we're getting into the word. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to jump around a little bit, not much. I, I gave my wife a few scriptures to read to our, to our hearing on tonight. What do you want? Which one you want first? You read Proverbs first. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6 and 19, isn't it? You don't want me to read up to 6 and 19. I guess you can go up to what? 16 and read down. From 19? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, Proverbs six sixteen through 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. That's Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Okay, and read, go ahead and jump on, read Matthew 6 and, 20, 6 and 23. Matthew 6, 23. Yeah. I'm just setting up something, y'all. We're going slow with it. I'm just setting it up. 
when we, so we, when we get to talking about it, you guys come out with your questions and, and comments. Matthew 6, verse 23. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? That ain't, that's not the right one. What was it? It's six twenty-three. What, now, what, what was that six in, when they say, depart from me, you work up the nickel to I never knew you? Well, that's 623. Um, Come out of Google that scripture and find it for me right quick. Um, Google it was found find it. That, what is it? Uh, depart from me, I never knew you work up the nickel. Where does it say in the Bible, depart from me, I never knew you? Matthew 7. 7 what? 21. 7 and 20, okay. We got our things mixed. <laughs> read it. Read it. 21 read it. through 23. Go ahead and read it, but tell us since you found it. I don't have it yet. Okay, I got it if you want me to. Yeah. Okay, 7, 21 through 23. Now that's what this good okay. said. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, that he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work, ye that work iniquities. Iniquity. Let me ask you a question. When, when she read in Proverbs 6 and 19, when it said the six things that God hates, you hear the prophet say, a lying tongue. Can uh, you read that over again right quick? Then we're going to jump right in when I'm, when I'm going. Okay, Proverbs 6 and 19. I've got it if you want okay, to read go ahead, Todd, go ahead. These six things this the Lord hate, doth the Lord hate, Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth e wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, and a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Listen, okay, now the first time we, as soon as we encounter someone that seem to be a homosexual. The first thing, a lot of things that we'll say, you know, that's abomination unto the Lord, right? That's correct. But, there's other things. But there's other things, that's abomination as well. There's other things that the Lord tongue. don't like. A lying tongue. Now, give me uh, First Timothy uh, about the qualification of a, of a pastor. So a little boy. Let's see if I still got it. What does First Timothy three one mean? Talking about what the leaders of the church should be. Can you, can you give us give us some of that? You ain't got to give it all. Just give them enough. To, uh, it's not gonna leave my, leave my track down before we start rolling on it. This verse begins First Timothy three one. What does it mean? The verse begins a new section extending through verse seven. Here Paul discusses the qualifications of elders, also known as pastors, bishops, or overseers. In this verse, Paul begins by stating that his words are trustworthy, a formula that he used in the pastoral epistles before given an axiomatic quote. He also used them. Okay, hold on. Uh, all of the following pronouns in this section are specifically male with qualifications including the husband of one wife and managing his, and uh, manages his own household. Okay, now An we'll... overseer or elder is a position of top leadership in the church. Uh, bishop, a pastor, uh, elder, I the guess lead, that's the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now Walter, when you bought your truck, mm -hmm. right, if you went to the car lot and told them, Tim is bouncing for me, a co-signing for me, 
to get this truck. But I didn't. I don't even have no clue you're getting a truck. Okay. You got you, you, you purchased your truck with a lie, right? You didn't get it honest. Right or right wrong? That's right. That's right. Okay. Now when she just read the qualifications of a church leader, of a of a of a somebody in leadership, not you know, a pastor or a whatever. And and, 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 and and we have a lot of Women pastors, they call themselves pastors. Mm -hmm. But according to the Bible, according to the Word of God, somebody ain't right, man. Something's in there. Not a lot, of, according to what she read, a lot of us men don't qualify. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you're a woman, you definitely don't qualify. Even though you might be doing a great job of leadership in your church, but your leadership is in vain, according to the Word of God. Well, don't say the women. Of the church are supposed to uh, kind of lead the younger women. Man, that's their and job the children in the church. And encourage but them. If you go head on and, 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 and look over and not even pay attention or don't even care what our Lord and Savior say, but what Paul wrote it, but, but Paul gave, but Jesus gave Paul permission to write what he wrote in the book, right? Correct. So if you overlook all of that, and go head on and, and pastor, Reverend, whatever, doctor, so whatever you call yourself. And when it's all said and done, when you stand before Christ, we say, we say, but Jesus did not do me the wonderful thing. I pastored a great church. You know, I prophesied in your name. I fed the hungry. Uh, I clothed the nickel. And, and what, what did they say in Matthews? Depart from me. He said, I never knew. You know why he didn't know? Because he didn't give you authority. To use his name. You are the man. You a liar. Mm -hmm. Your whole ministry is based upon a lie. Because Jesus didn't tell you. He, he was saying in his word what, what, who qualifies to do what, right? So how, well, how do we have so many people within the body of Christ that they can do whatever <coughs> they want to do as long as I apply Jesus' name to it? It's okay. Am I right? Or I'm just talking. I'm sounding crazy. I'm not making a lot of people mad tonight, but it don't matter. <laughs> it says a leader must be well thought of, committed to his wife, cool and collected. Now this is in the King James version. Sensible and hospitable. He must know what he's talking about, but not over fond of wine, not pushy, but. So thank you, Holy Ghost. So in, uh, so is that why a lot of our leaders agree with? The homosexuality in the church because they 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 live on the same lie. Mm -hmm. They both well, I don't they, see they, how they both were part of the same lie. You know, if I'm a thief, you a thief. I can't get mad at you for stealing. And yes, I gotta say, well, Tom, how you steal so good and try to get in good with you? You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if I'm standing for what's righteous and preaching the word of God. We have to stand on it, right? No, then, then, then we say, God, for God, I live for God. I die in the Bible. Tell me to hate what God hate and love what God love. That's correct. But if I ain't got myself together. Excuse me, please. I don't have authority to right. point the finger at anybody. You got to clean up your own body. You know what I'm saying? Well, you, you have a lot of people even in, I mean, well, first of all, the Bible talks about his word is forever settled in heaven. Mm-hmm. The Word of God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's correct. But then you have Bible scholars, quote unquote, that say, well, like when it comes to the scripture in Timothy, where it says uh, he must be the husband of one wife, um, one that ruleth his own house, having his children in subjection. Uh, for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Amen. So... There's an order, whether people like it or not. When when Adam and Eve were in the garden, mm -hmm. she was deceived. Right. She she was no offense. I love what? women. <laughs> well, we're glad you love women, but women you know, are the weaker vessel. We are. The, 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 the Bible says that. And doesn't you know, mean that they're less. No, less. No, it doesn't mean that. It and doesn't, you know, we're not talking about your character, your personality, mm -hmm. who you are as a person. But there's an order. God That's said order. an order that the man was the head of the house. But you know, Todd, it took me a long time when I got when I met Tim. We got married. It took me a minute to get on that road because with 
I'm not going into my past especially, but I always felt like I was the leader of that house. You know, and and see, Tim said, you ain't got to do that no more, Kathy. And, and this is not. That's nice. not to say there aren't times. I mean, if you're a single parent, you know, my mom was. Mm -hmm. She had to raise us. She my had to us. Was at one she time. led us spiritually. Yes. There wasn't, did there wasn't a man in the home to do so. Right. But but she she didn't. It's not like she said, "Well, I'm the man of the house." She just took her role as a mother and a godly mother to do that. But she and worked up under under the Lord, though. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So there's the Bible says for for why and 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 people see people explain all this away. First of all, they say, "Well, Paul wrote this, and he was anti women, <laughs> and so therefore." This, well, there's another verse that says that all Scripture is given by inspiration. inspiration. So this is God breathed. Right. So God has an order, and you know how how can you in this Scripture in Timothy um, is talking about if the if the man's the head of the house, then how can that word apply to women being bishops and pastors? Head of the church, God's house. Head of the church. And God telling the man, you got to be head of your house, but he tell the woman, you can be head of my house. Mm -hmm. You can and head see, my house. See, that's like speaking and, and, and see, that, the that's corner, what, 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 what that is. But you remember when I said earlier, we get by with some stuff. Mm -hmm. But we don't get away. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another verse, and I want to add this. Because a lot of times... I've heard men get up and beat women over the head with, oh, you're supposed to be in subjection to your husband. Well, there's another part of that verse that says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So I'm going to tell you the re responsibility falls on the man. More more than they want or want on them. You're dead right. Exactly. More, more responsibility falls on the man that than, says he, a lot. than he realized like what he's right. walking under. But see, I have to say, and I say this a lot, every male is not, not a man. A man. Right. right. But if a man if a man loves his wife as Christ loved the church, he's not going to beat her with the rod of subjection. No. But, whack her on the head every time and say, shut up, woman. <laughs> That's, he's not going to do that to her. But they're going to love her, he, and they're going to work together. Think on this level. Yeah. If we all walk in the position... That was given to us. Exactly. You think how much power would be in the house of God? Mm -hmm. Oh, in our lives all together. And we all walk accordingly. Not talk accordingly. Walk it. And we, if walk we all walk, walk accordingly. Walk, if, if, if my house was lined up like it's supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? If your house was lined up like it's supposed to be, your house was lined up like it was supposed to be. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about our physical home, our, 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 our bodies. We, we the church. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we have a lot. It's going to ride this thing, man, do we ever, if we rode the truth like we ride grace, God don't matter. If we rode the truth like we ride the grace of God, mm -hmm. now we, we, we ride that grace of God to the bitter end. Well, if we get to the point, if, if we follow the order of the word of God, that God's ahead, we work under him, the husband loving the wife, the wife in subjection to him, if, if there is nothing... If you operate within that position that God puts you, if you operate outside of that, that becomes pride. And isn't that one of the things he said? That right is, hey, Proverbs, not, 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 he hey, hey, this is what I'm talking about tonight. See, so we, we beat the homosexuals up. Y'all you know saying that we beat them up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that's, us, that's the worst. in no better shape. Yeah. That's the you worst thing. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, a lot of us ain't no better say God hate all this stuff. He hate the lie, he hate the he hate the he hate the, the person that started this course. He hate the lie, he hate the person that run the mischief. He hate a lot of stuff. He loves, yeah. Sin is sin is sin. Sin is uh, sin. You know, but, but see my whole point on tonight, a lot of us, man, and, and, and he hate the lying female preachers that say they are pastors. That's in there. If you just say God called you a preacher, tell you to lie on God. God put it in his word. He didn't say that. We skip over that. We skip over that. But we'll beat the homosexual up in a minute. Now, I'm not advocating for a homosexuality, but I'm saying it's in the word. It's all the same. God hate all that stuff. You can't take out, you know. And, and, well, how, and, how can you stand in a pulpit and try to preach the word of God when your life isn't what it should be? You you live in 
something you shouldn't be living and doing. You need to sit on down, all right? Good example. I, I got a good example. Todd, you too long, man. Now, if you come out here and cut my grass every week, I ain't tell you to cut the grass. You just took a money yourself, for whatever reason, to, to come out here and do keep my yard straight. One, one day, one day, you're not going to do Tim, you owe me such and such. What? Within the authority yeah, that you give well, of that you of that, the people that you work for. Yeah, that, 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 I mean, it's the same thing. When I read this today, man, I, I read it in pieces, but it blew my mind when God put it all together for me. And we wonder why they have no power in the church. We think there's power in the church, but the church people got the church for the people. God said, even when there's number two and three of y'all there, He said, I'm, I'm in the midst of that. I'm not in the midst of no confusion. Well, there's no power in the church because there's a struggle for position. And position... It, they got more chiefs I mean, than they do Indians. I, I pastored. I pastored, and I was no different. There, there's a level of respect, but I was no different from any other member that you... As a matter of fact, let me give you this right quick. When I grew up, I grew up in a Baptist church. And on the platform, mm -hmm. on the pulpit, yeah. they always had these two chairs that sit up there. They always reminded me of thrones. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a king sitting on the throne. Right. So when we built that new church, I told my, I told the building committee, I said, now, when you go to put the, the chairs on the on the pulpit, I said, I want you to buy too many pews, two two seater pews. Be thrown. And they're like, why? I said, because when I'm sitting on that platform, I don't want to sit on anything different than my members are sitting, mm -hmm. because we're equal in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you have a head, we have a head on our bodies. Mm -hmm. And now that head, the head's important. You cut the head off and, and then you don't have a body. But if every member of my body decided to do something different, there's some days it feels like it wants to, but if every member of my body, I get ready to walk out of here, what if my left leg wants to go to the right and my right oh, leg Lord. wants to go to the left? You going down. You going down. <laughs> and accomplishing nothing but hurt. Right. Oh, good. But when my legs work properly in order mm -hmm. and under the authority of the mind and the brain to go in this direction, mm -hmm. you're going to accomplish something. Right. So, you know, how, and then if I didn't have toes, how are you going to balance yourself? True. You know, the you most know. uncomely members can be the most important. Right. You know, I didn't know, I, that's good to me, but I didn't know <coughs> how important body functions was until I was out you didn't have you know, Before I got paralyzed, I can hold one of my legs up in there and hop on one leg real good. <laughs> but once I lost the use of that one side, I couldn't do that. Right. Mm. Cause my, my, uh, my, my, my living was off. I was off. Mm. And you, you understand what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I, and and I, I didn't know how important having use of my left arm was until it was gone. And see, it's so much that we are missing in the body of Christ. We're looking over the small, simple stuff. Mm -hmm. we, we, come, we come into the big stuff. You know, we got all these preachers who want to be apostles and all these, they, they want to be all this great, deep stuff. You ain't even being a good husband. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm going to make some folk mad tonight, but it's the truth. We want to speak in tongues on everybody. And, and, and the Bible says tongues is on cease. That's not, that's, not, that's not the day and time for speaking in tongues. It's the day and time for walking in love. It's the day and time for wondering how to love your fellow man, how to help your neighbor. Well, speaking in tongues edifies the person and not the body. Not the body. Right. You know, but also say, I also talks about the tongues going to cease. It's going to cease. Oh, tongues I agree. Going, yeah. But even, even people that... Uh, I'm underscoring what you're preaching tonight. Again, like I've heard, I've even heard people say that if you didn't, you weren't filled with the Holy Ghost, evident speaking in tongues, you weren't going to heaven. Oh, Listen, please. if I never speak another word in, yeah, this tongue, in this tongue or any other tongue, 
I am going to heaven because of Jesus. That's right. Not because of nothing you not do. Not because of anything I they, do, they nothing I say. It's, it's, it's all the blood of Jesus. And, and, my and trust here's something in I don't like. I, I've heard this before. If you can't recall the exact moment, day, time you were saved, you accepted Jesus, you aren't saved. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. Well, then that's putting your salvation in a day and a time instead mm -hmm. of in Jesus. That's exactly right. I can't remember the day and the time. I remember how old I was because I remember I was five and I, you know, I got baptized. I didn't understand everything then. I rededicated my life several times since then because you know, I it's, didn't it's, understand There's so everything. much stuff that's going around out there. I mean, to where you have to really be careful of what you're letting into your spirit, man. Because yeah. a lot of stuff that sound right and look right. You anybody anybody here ever met a saw a person, say you didn't know it, but you sat in this, you saw somebody and they looked at normal. Had a normal like a normal person. But you sit down with that person and had a conversation with them. You realize this dude this girl they short of them bricks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're a yes. brick short of a load. And and see there's a lot of a lot of them folk in the body of Christ now. They talk by it, but they, they, they know how they know how to do all in church. Stuff. I'll well, give you an example. Let me tell you something real quick. I just this Take your time. They gotta be quick. We don't have fun tonight with this. A few minutes ago, before I got here, I went and got went up, give me a bite to eat up here, and uh, a lady I've seen up there time and time and time again up at Kepley's, and um, she walked back there and asked me my name. She said, "Are you are you Todd?" And I said, "I am." She said, "Well, do you know such and such?" And the people that she's talking about, the wife, not too good of a person. I said, yes, I, I know them. That's all I said. So I talked on a little bit. She said, well, I used to work with her years ago. And I said, she used to mention that y'all were friends. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. And then she said, well, she got a little bit of a sharp tongue. I said, she got a whole lot, <laughs> a whole lot of a sharp tongue. I said, be honest with you. Now that you brought it up, I said, I guess you noticed I was quiet. And I just told you, yes, I knew who this person was. I said, she could, be, she could just be downright wicked and mean. She said, I agree. So as a paying the lead, I said, well, I said, I, I hope I didn't say anything out of the way. She said, no. She said, but I'll tell you what surprised me. She said, when we were at, all, at work, she could talk this. Mm-hmm. And she said, but I always wondered how the two never connected. She could talk this, but then be so ugly to people. Hmm. Well, that's having a knowledge of the Word of God, but not putting it into practice. Right. And that, and that, now thank God she was, she was a believer. Mm -hmm. What would that have done to her if she's an unbeliever? And so this person was always trying to, want to be in control, want to control everybody. Uh -huh. And that's, that's what's wrong with this thing again fighting for position to the point we, we fight for position and put the power of God outside the church, right. outside the body of Christ. Right. And it's no wonder people's not coming to know Jesus. They they don't like what they see. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you know, you can't fool street folk, people unsaved. It's hard to get one over on them. Us church folk are so vulnerable. They'll say, well, if, somebody, if that's the way it is to be a Christian, why do I need that? I th I've shared this a little bit before, and, and Walter, I've not shared my whole experience in my life with you, but I went through some stuff some years ago, and I'm, in a, and I'm in a situation that I shouldn't have been in. But anyway, the place I was in, there was a, there was a man that had been charged with five murders, Ooh. being convicted of two of them, and had three more to go. Never see the light of day. Mm. They say the eyes are the window to the soul. Well, you look at this guy in his eyes, and there was nothing there. I mean, he was it was cold, it was blank. Yeah, so one night, one night he called me and wanted to know. He said, "I, I want to know something." I said, "What's that?" He said, "What do I call you?" I said, "Well, what do you mean?" He said, "Well, you're a, you're a preacher, aren't you?" I said, "I am." He said, "Well, should I call you Reverend or Pastor, Pastor or?" or minister, and I said, no, you just call me Todd. 
And he made a statement. He said, I have seen people come and go and claim to be Christians, claim to be Muslims. He said, now this is a five-time murder. Mm. And he said, but you're different. And he <laughs> said, he said that deserves respect. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you that due respect. Aww. Well, now I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn tonight, but <laughs> I've often said I'm not a Bible thumper. When I was pastoring, I told you about going in J.C. Penney. Mm -hmm. I, I never walked in a business or a place and said, I'm, I'm Pastor so-and-so, where's my discount, mm -hmm. you know? It's just like you, you talk about him buying a vehicle. All right, let's say, let's say you went and bought a vehicle, most broken down thing in the, that you'd ever seen, tires running flat, motor ain't making the noise. You think there's going to be anything appealing to that truck that I run up to you and ask you where you bought that thing from because I'm going to get one just like it? <laughs> you want something that's functioning, something that works. Uh -huh. And then that's what, you know, you follow what I'm saying tonight? Mm -hmm. People's got to see Jesus yeah. in all of us. Yeah. And that only comes from following his word and that's knowing it. his word is mm -hmm. the point you I think you're, you're getting to tonight yeah. is... You can't you can't make it up along as you go, mm -hmm. and make it fit what you want it to fit. The word is the word; it says what it says, and and the thing about sin and everything else. There's no big sin, little sin. There's no black lies, big lies, and little white lies. A lie is alive, and a lie that God hates is abomination in the sight of God. We're the one that categorizes sin, yeah. and usually we categorize sin. As a little sin, if it's something we have problems with, yeah. yeah. But now, if you have problems with it, the big sin. That's a big sin. Mm -hmm. But but our sins are small. Sin. <laughs> My sin is little. And you got to be saying to yourself, man. Mm -hmm. Poor old Walter gets used. I know. Bless his heart. Walter, you got to <laughs> pick a different chair <laughs> next time. Yeah. But, but, anyway. the same, but the vice vice versa, though. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, if, you, if you're not struggling with something in your life, and I am, not that you're, the, and I know. By being here with him, that you're not this type of person. But if you were like most people who claim the name of Christ, you can be like, well, man, I don't know why he's struggling with that. Well, because you're not. Correct. Because <laughs> you're not. That's you right. don't know what it's like to struggle you, with you it. Remember, you remember three weeks ago, I don't know if he was here that week, that week when I, we were talking about sex before marriage. And, and, we, and you know, they say, I, I tell you, I've been in several counseling sessions but an unmarried couple that's planning to be married, that's a question I've never asked. Have y'all had sex? That ain't my business. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I know what I did before I got married. Now, even me to stand in judgment and say, you know, you can't have sex before you get married because I'm married now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Well, even if you're pure as a, as a driven snow, it's none of your business. That's why it's none yeah. of my business. So, I, you know, I, I, we have to be real. Uh, but now I want to clear something up, though, and I apologize. Just clear it up. I have nothing against any pastor, anybody that calls himself a pastor, whether it's male or female, male or female. I have nothing against it, nothing against it. But I must warn you, according to Matthews 7, and you know, I, I would, if I, 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 would, I, would, I, would, I would recheck myself and make sure that I heard the right call. Because I was told, when I, I remember getting my call into ministry. And, and, and my pastor told me, the first thing he said before we even talked about getting prepared, he said, you know, there's two calls. He said, a lot of people confuse God is calling them out of sin. They think that's a call to preach. Mm. It's all a call. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and see, if I, was, if I was someone tonight, I would be sure of my call. Because it, it's sad to do all this great work in the great in, in, in the kingdom and get before our Lord and Savior. He said, I never knew you. So, so the question is tonight, it's not if do you know Christ. Is it that Christ, do Christ know you? He said, I never knew you. So I don't even know you. So how you can do something in my name? How can you use my name? I didn't know you. I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. And, and, and we know prophesizing is preaching, right? Mm -hmm. So it had to be a preacher that he was talking to. 
Did I mean? Did I do many wonderful things? I name other things that he didn't. And that, now, now they they, they walking in lie and they walking in pride. Uh, you can start saying, well, did I do all this good? So I, I, let, I, let, I let such and such hold that did all this good thing. So you've been keeping record of the good stuff that you say you've been doing. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit of pride in there, and, and you walking in, in, in a lie. You are lying on Christ. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because Christ didn't tell you to do what he said to do. And two things I know Christ is not going to, he honored his word above his own name. And, 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 I, and I know we, we, we are in, 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 in a different dispensation of Christ now. I, 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 know, I know that. But his word remains the same. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's a verse, 2 Peter 1.10. He says, um, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your, your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. But you'll not stumble. So I think what I think tying that in with this scripture, I mean, first of all, we better be sure we belong to Him. You better um, be sure. Yes, that, that's, that's outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, and 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 that's pretty strong wording when He says, you know, you come up and say, well, haven't I done this and I've done that and I've done this in Your name? Well, it's not doing stuff in His name that makes us His child. It's being birthed into the family of God. That makes us child. But uh, but He said. In that verse, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So Peter says, be sure. <laughs> you better be sure your call, of your calling and your election. Because if you're sure of that, of your relationship, then you're not going to stumble. You're not going you're not going to miss all this stuff that he's talking about others missed. But even even in that, Brother you're right. That, that, that was a great, great scripture you brought up. Even in that, even if we do if you if you true uh, this 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 I, I mean I can speak for myself. It's been times in my life as a pastor that I have stumbled, failed, did a lot of stuff that I take to my grave. You understand what I'm saying? As a pastor, I tried to quit. I would quit Sunday evening and be back Wednesday night. More than one time, because pastor, you pastor the church. If anybody pastor the church, they know what I'm talking about. That's the most tedious, hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. To deal with folk don't believe and don't want to hear what you're, what you're speaking to. And to take. Plus, you're under a microscope. They constantly looking for something, aren't they? When you're mm -hmm. a pastor. And, and one reason why I don't identify myself as a pastor because once you do that, you actually put the spotlight on you, like my wife said. You 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 shine a, you got a target on you now. And what I think a lot of the preachers don't understand that they don't care. We only have one reputation. You understand what I'm saying? Once once we turn into reputation, we can get it right with God, but folk will never let you live it down. Folks don't like to forget stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wish remember. people were as forgiven as Jesus and remembered your sin no more, but people aren't like that. And, and Jesus gave us the best example of that when he dealt with Peter. Y'all remember he told Peter, you're going to deny me before the cross, for what happened, happened. You know, y'all know what I'm saying. Anyway, when, 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 when Jesus was, was put, put to the cross, when, when he was put in the tomb, say, say Mary and the other Mary that came to the tomb, <coughs> But Jesus was supposed to be, and there was an angel there. And he said, what what, why y'all looking for the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. So he has arisen. He said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Peter. Mm -hmm. Now, Peter wanted to deny him. He told Peter to deny him. Cuss the people out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I ain't one of them. You know what I'm saying? But he said, make sure you tell Peter. Mm -hmm. Tell my disciples, but make sure. You bring Peter. Because mm -hmm. Peter got to preach. You, you, know, you know that they like us in church today. What do you want Peter for? Didn't he hear about what Peter did? Uh, Jesus, did you know Peter? Peter cussed the people out. He does, Peter told the folk he never knew you. Peter, mm -hmm. the, the, what do you want Peter for? Did they bring Peter? Mm -hmm. He was showing them 
them and Peter. Because we all had times in our life, man, when we, when we denied Jesus, when we cussed out, when we, when we, when we put one of the spikes in Jesus' hands or his feet. You know we all had times in our life when we have done that. And Jesus still loved us. It had been time in my life when I, when I felt almost ashamed to stand before God's people. Yeah, yes, yeah, I know you had the moment yourself. I, 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 I know you, I, I feel like, man, because, and, and see, but I had to learn a lot of that be the enemy. Because mm -hmm. we know Jesus' word, he said, I still love you. Mm -hmm. Christ, I still forgive you. We got to still preach strong. We, I mean, we have to be open. But anyway, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that we have no right, man, to, 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 to condemn people for whatever reason. For whatever reason, I mean, a lot of us fall up under that same category in in Proverbs six and nineteen. We 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 can put our initials but by, beside one of those liars. What was it? Liars? Liars? Who are? How many was it? Well, there's a lying tongue. Um. Uh, the feet. Um, a proud look. Yeah. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent and blood. blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. And we all fall up under one of those categories. And we've all done something like that. We've all right? done something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, that being said, we all got a lot to be grateful for. And you know what thing I was saying to my wife this night was coming from Walmart. I said, you know one thing, I said, I think people overlook. We don't thank God for a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And not to be crazy out of our minds these days in a world with a good sense you can better make it. Mm -hmm. So if you got some mental issues going on, you 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 almost done with it. And think if you have mental issues and, and no insurance, you can't even go to a mental hospital. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all screwed me. But, uh, but uh, it, it, I just wanted to share that tonight. This bit is in my screen. I hope y'all got some out of what was said on tonight. We need to learn how to follow God's blueprint, man. This, this, this is the word of God. We start adding our stuff. Well, it says not to add or subtract anything from this word. Is that not true? I believe yeah, it's true. it true. says that in the Bible. Uh, and so when people are saying, well, this isn't what God meant, it's exactly what God meant. Mm -hmm. It's just because you have trouble walking the straight and narrow, accepting it, accepting it and, and getting on the sidewalk, as I call it, uh, Todd calls it, coloring inside the outside line. Outside the line. Outside the line. Yeah, but uh, but when, when you just, I mean, and it's not easy some days. You, I mean, I, it's not easy some days, you know. I, I, I think I'm all right till I go outside the store, get in the car, and go off and get, get around people. That's what the child of is a child of your faith. <laughs> my, my my little my little nice wife got a habit, man. I get out all the time. She like to play chicken with the car. I think I think baby don't do that. She was like, we was coming home. I'm telling. We was coming home. We was coming home yesterday, and the car came. You know, some people drive faster than others. Car came flying up behind. Uh, say, uh, and I see in the room, I said, this car come flying up behind me like that. I said, well, man, man, you just drive past. So I, I forgot what, whatever I said. So so the guy went around and got in the other lane. Now, he trying to get in my lane. My wife going to speed up. <laughs> so, That's man. I would uh, never that, do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, it's aggravating. People get right on your bumper. I mean, if I touched my brakes, he would have hit me. I've done that before too. Yeah, but we all have our little issues, man. That's real in life. Life. You know, it ain't like like uh, uh Pastor Todd said, there's no little issues and there's no big sin, issues. Sin. It's just issues. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. But some people you ever met a person that don't see their own stuff? Yes. Mm -hmm. They only see yours. And like they ain't never did nothing wrong. Quick the one to lay hands on you and pray for you. Like they got it all together. I think he said something about that in the book about don't try to get the splinter out of my eye 
Till you get to the law game. Yeah, you're you're right. right. <laughs> That's true. So since we're going to end on tonight, I pray that somebody got something out of something that was said tonight. I hope somehow tonight what uh, Pastor Todd said in his prayer, I hope we don't just hear the word. I hope we just hear the word and the word make us want to change. Mm -hmm. And I think we all ought to be sure of our call. Now, I don't have authority or no other, no other know how to say who was called and who wasn't called. I only have the word of God mm -hmm. to go by. That's all you need. Thanks. That's all you need. That's, so, that's exactly right. Don't get upset with me for reading. Get upset with God. Don't get upset. With the if, 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 if you're a prayer warrior like you say, you would say a prayer to God, you need to change that word, God. Make it make it different. So it to fit my situation. Now, but again, thank you guys for tuning in for this Tuesday night Bible study at the Cross of Death with Pastor Clark. I pray you get something out of something that was said on tonight. I also like to thank you know, those of us that are in attendance on tonight. You know what I'm saying? We have, I, I know I had a great time in this word on tonight. I pray that you guys got something out of something that I said. You know, I just thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, like I said, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share it with your friend and your neighbor. Let them, let them see we we do some good teaching around here some, from time to time. I think tonight was a good lesson. It was the truth. I'll put it like that. It was the truth. Thank you, and may God bless you, and heaven smile upon you.